Coming up, an update on how a local organization is lending a helping hand in Israel and learn about the discovery of a rare ancient coin used during the reign of King Herod. Well, welcome to 700 Club Canada. You know, today is a special uh, show. We are highlighting Israel, and we're normally talking about the history or archaeology of Israel. And in today's show, we're actually going to be talking to a special guest who's going to be giving us insight on the current state of Israel. So joining us today is Jeff Feuders. He's the executive director of First Century Foundations, a ministry you support by being a 700 Club Canada monthly partner. Recently, Jeff and his team visited Israel to offer their support to people in that area. Here's a video highlighting their trip. At First Century Foundations, we were so excited to go back to Israel this month after a long hiatus from travel there due to the war. It was a different feeling Israel than we've experienced in the past. Everyone either knows a victim from October 7th or a soldier whose life has been lost, or they have a relative currently serving in the IDF. While the mood is somber, it was so amazing to reconnect with our friends there and see again firsthand how God is using them to meet the needs of so many who are suffering and facing monumental challenges as a result of this conflict. We thank God that we can support organizations like the Joseph Project, Israel Relief Aid, and many congregations, as well as Karen Sheva, who helps support the Ethiopian Jewish community. The amazing thing about helping ministries in Israel is that many of them are working together to meet the need. And not just organizations working together, but Arab and Jew, side by side, ministering to the needs all around them. Thank you to all of our partners here at home who have helped us to provide humanitarian aid, food, clothing, toiletries, and shelter for displaced families, along with legal help and trauma counseling for victims and for IDF soldiers. And a very special thank you today to 700 Club Canada and your supporters. Together, we are making a difference in Israel. Well, welcome, Jeff. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Emily. It's a pleasure, and uh, we appreciate all of you at 700 Club so much. Well, we just heard that you've recently returned from Israel. So tell us, what's the overall feeling like compared to your previous visits? Well, I I mentioned uh, in the video, there there's a different sense, a different feeling in Israel these days. I was warned about it before we returned, and um, it's a it's a sober, somber, um, sometimes sad kind of feeling because every single person, every Jewish person, every Arab person, is impacted by uh, this conflict that is taking place, and all of them know someone who has been uh, affected in a negative way, and so. You know, we we talk to friends who have family, sons and daughters that are serving in the IDF. The concern levels for them is high. We have uh, others in in our some of the congregations that we support, a Messianic congregation that has actually uh, lost a soldier, a soldier that's been killed. And there's just so much of this that uh, people are experiencing there in the land. And so you could almost you could almost feel it. I mean, in the in the airport and and walking. Uh, in the in the city of Jerusalem, there's a real different sense there these days. Mm, I bet must be difficult, especially having been there in the past and sort of experiencing this new reality. So, what was the purpose of your trip? Well, uh, since October seventh, as you can imagine, uh, we have uh, raised a lot of funds to help support projects in the land of Israel, and so. The main purpose of this recent trip was to go 
and meet with some of the ministries that we had funded projects through to get some uh, information from them, some testimonials and so on that we could share with, with partners back home. That's where uh, the footage for this video that we shared today came from. And uh, also just to encourage them, to pray with them, to let them know that we stand with them and that we support them. And I think that uh, it was very important for me to be able to go back and and get to Israel so that I could do that very thing. And then the other reason was we wanted to uh, bear witness, to bear witness to these horrific tragedies that took place on October 7th, to be able to stand in some of the places where these things happened. And it was a very moving experience to be at uh, the site of the Nova Music Festival at the memorial there and uh, to listen to a first responder who shared with us uh, what it was like to arrive at the scene on the evening of October 7th and to discover the, the carnage that they found there. Um, this is a terrible, terrible situation. And I felt like I needed to, to just bear witness with the people there in Israel that, uh, you know, this actually happened because already, you know, people are denying it. Well, Jeff, thank you for your continued work in Israel and all that you're doing there. I know that you've been, uh, your First Century Foundations has been an incredible support all along the way. So why don't you share with us some of the ongoing needs that are there and, and how have they changed since the beginning of the war? Yeah, well, and that's a, a great thing for us to be able to talk about because, you know, from the beginning, we've been helping displaced families. We've been uh, moving a lot of humanitarian aid through a number of organizations and, uh, and congregations there in the land. Um, those needs do continue. There still are somewhere around 100,000 displaced families from the Golan in the north because of the, uh, the pending um, war that could be coming from Hezbollah there on the northern border. Uh, but there has been some change in some of the needs as well. And so, you know, just quickly, we continue to provide humanitarian aid, but those aid centers are becoming depleted. And so some of the projects that we've funded recently are to help to restock aid centers all across the country with necessary items, especially those that might be needed in an emergency response going forward. And then also there is a need for trauma counseling for support for the victims of October 7th. Um, depression is just a huge issue in Israel right now. And whether someone was impacted directly or, or indirectly, uh, there still is a lot of need for this type of help. Yeah, you can see how much of a need there really is. And it's so great that you're able to be really the hands and feet there of Jesus and help people to know that they're still loved and cared for. And so it's so incredible. Well, we're going to explore more right after this. We'll be right back with Jeff Uters and more from Israel. Someone should download the CBN Family app to get an easy view at all of CBN's media. Having access easily to that faith-based content is so invaluable. This is a great way I could take that with me on the go, you know? This app is really easy to use. My favorite feature is the fact that you can look at like the different like feeds, like the news, animations. This app has exactly what you're looking for as far as Christian values go. Well, you know, Jeff, being there firsthand, I'm sure you see things that we're not even hearing about or aware of. So can you tell us anything that's happening that maybe we're not hearing on the news? That's a, a very um, interesting question that I'm going to have to think about for a moment. I mean, what we see is um, typically what's happening in the world of the believers there. And um, congregations who are reaching out to those around them are seeing needs and meeting needs wherever they can. And we're very, very uh, proud to be involved with congregations that are reaching both uh, Jewish people affected by this crisis and also uh, Arabs who are affected by this crisis. One of the projects that we've been working with um, is reaching into the, the West Bank, where because of the conflict, many people 
all the people actually who had jobs in Jerusalem and other parts of Israel uh, and came in and out of the West Bank every day to work, they have not been able to do that since the 7th of October. And so you can imagine the uh, the needs that they have uh, financially and for food and supplies. And so it's been a wonderful thing to be able to partner with uh, the Mercy Fund at Christ Church, for example, and see that there are uh, Arab believers who are going into the West Bank and providing these kinds of things for those in need there as well. And so it's uh, it's it's good to see sort of both sides and understand that uh, that there is help and assistance needed in uh, in both places and we're very pleased to be able to do that. I love that. Thank you for shedding light on that and and seeing what is happening right there on the ground that people are caring for one another, that people are helping one another, and that uh, you can see that in, in the midst of crisis that people are coming together. So, what mm-hmm. would you say your your message to Christians and the church in Canada regarding the current situation in Israel would be? Well. I would like to encourage believers, encourage the church here in Canada to pray for and support Israel in this very, very difficult time in their history. This is a a crisis they are facing that is the greatest since the Holocaust. This has been the most horrific attack on Israel since the Holocaust. And as many people know, support for Israel very quickly waned uh, in just a few weeks after October 7th. We have seen rising anti-Semitism throughout the world. And sadly, a lot of this we are seeing in Canada as well. And I want, uh, you know, believers to be to be careful, to, to, to understand that we have to hold multiple truths uh, at one time and be able to sort of navigate and, and balance that the best we can. And, you know, the truth is um, Israel has had to respond to this terrible attack. The truth is also that there are innocent civilians who are the victims in, in Gaza. But then another truth is that uh, Hamas really is responsible for the victimization of these Palestinians and are using them as human shields. And even just as recently as a, a, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we see, uh, you know, attacks uh, or or, um, incursions into Al-Shifa Hospital, for example, where Hamas soldiers are hiding among civilians and medical staff, endangering them in the process, and making it, uh, you know, very difficult for Israel to do what they need to do. So I want the church to pray. I want Mm -hmm. the church to pray for innocent people on both sides, and to pray that good will triumph over evil. Yeah, it can be so hard sometimes to look at a situation like this and know what to do. Uh, But what you're asking is that as you continue to serve the people of Israel, um, that we can pray for you, pray for your organization, and pray for all those that are helping right there. So let's just take a moment to do that. God, we just lift up Israel to you, and, and we pray that your peace would be upon that nation. We pray for Jeff and First Century Foundations, God, that they would, um, that you would give them strength, that you would give them comfort as they're there on the ground doing the work, God, that you've called them to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for uh, joining us and giving light to what is happening right now in Israel. Thank you. My pleasure, Emily. And now a team of marine archaeologists make a rare find off the coast of Caesarea in Israel. At the entrance of the harbor of Caesarea, divers from the Israel Antiquities Authority made a rare discovery. To find two different shipwrecks mixed together on the same site in a different of more than 1,000 years. To try to imagine that the ship was wrecked in the Roman period at the site, and then 1,000 years later, another ship was wrecked on maybe on the top of it or in the air of it. It was really interesting. In one area, Charvit and his partner found both bronze coins from the third century and silver coins from the 14th century. They are amazing, actually, from uh, our point of view, because they are telling a story. It's not only the artifacts, it's the whole story of all the shipwreck. What is the ship 
were doing there, uh, the period, what was the position or the situation of what was happening with the ship. The treasures also included a bronze eagle figurine, a symbol of Roman rule, and a red gemstone with the carving of a lyre, or what's known as David's harp. In the book of 1 Samuel from the Bible, it says David played his harp for King Saul. They also found a gold ring with the reference from the New Testament. This is the Good Shepherd ring found in the shipwrecks in the Mediterranean, and it helps tell the story of early Christians in the city of Caesarea during the Roman Empire. As we know, the symbol of the Good Shepherd is one of the first symbols of uh, Jesus, and uh, actually the idea of the Good Shepherd was um, adopted by the most of the local population who actually were looking forward into the new religion because in the Old Testament we actually have the reference to the Good Shepherd and his herd. The ring also tells a story about Christians from Caesarea nearly 1700 years ago. To find a ring from the third century when Christianity basically was still underground. Christians were persecuted during the third century. It's only a hundred years later under Constantine that, Christian, that Christianity becomes a state religion. So this is a ring of a, a Christian who lived in a period that Christians were still persecuted and killed, even in Caesarea. I think we have a pretty dramatic find here. Very simple, very laconic, just the male figure bearing the lamb on his shoulders. Almost exactly the same uh, image we can see on the walls of the catacombs in Rome, in the area where actually the services took place. The artifacts, coins, and ring help reconstruct the puzzle of Caesarea's past. Well, the ring is fantastic, of course. I mean, we often find coins from the Roman period. You know, archaeology is like a puzzle. You take different elements, and the wonderful thing in archaeology is that you can piece things together. You know, we have the site, we have the coins, we have the ship, and then this beautiful ring. And everything suddenly comes together. The ring also makes a personal connection. This ring connects you to the people, right? Like, especially when you find something, I'm talking about just myself, when I see something like that, it's something which is very personal in a way, right? You try to imagine the particular person who was wearing this ring, what were his thoughts or beliefs. It's really touching. I'm not a religious person by myself, but when I see something like that, I feel this connection to someone who lived hundreds and hundreds of years ago. The discoveries also reveal the port of Caesarea had a longer history than previously thought. Because some of the people, or some of the archaeologists were thinking that the uh, harbor was collapsed in the first century AD. Now we realize that the commerce and the ship were coming from all over the Mediterranean, also to Caesarea, in a later period, especially in the uh, late Roman and early Byzantine periods. Caesarea played a prominent role in the early church. The Book of Acts documents the first Christian baptism of a non-Jew happened there, and from Caesarea, the Apostle Paul helped take the gospel to the world. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, the Laboratories of the Israel Antiquities Authority, Jerusalem. I love what he said there. It's like history written in stone. It's God's truth written in stone. Well, here's the truth that we were reminded of today. Jesus is our good shepherd. It's been written, yes, on a stone as we see in this ring, but more importantly, that truth is written on our hearts through God's word and his promise to us. In Psalm 23, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Just as a shepherd provides peace and security for his flock, so does the Good Shepherd offer us peace that surpasses all understanding. His presence calms our fears and anxieties. His voice speaks words of comfort to our hearts, even through His Word. In the midst of life's chaos, we can find refuge in His comfort. As we see around the world and even as we're hearing more specifically in Israel, rather than peace, there seems to be a lot of turmoil and uncertainty. So let's just take this time together to pray. Pray for peace in our own lives, but also for those around the world who are in the middle of a less than peaceful situation. 
So let's pray. God, we just pray that your comfort would surround us today, that the peace that passes all understanding would be real in our lives today. And for those around the world, God, who are experiencing uh, chaos or who may feel overwhelmed or uncertain about the future, God, I pray that they would know that you are the good shepherd that will lead them by still waters. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer with me, I encourage you to call our prayer lines. And we want to give you this free resource entitled Peace. You can call us at 1-855-759-0700. And now the Tower of David Museum in Jerusalem shares about the discovery of a rare silver coin. Those who enter the old city through the historic Jaffa Gate are welcomed by the visually striking Tower of David Museum. Here at the Tower of David Museum, they discovered the foundations of King Herod's palace. These stairs lead down to the pools of his elaborate complex. And many historians and theologians believe it was at this palace that Jesus was brought before King Herod and Pontius Pilate. Right near us, the excavation of the Kishle you can find the foundation of this palace. We have the pool, the foundation, the Fatsa'el tower. So we probably know that Jesus was here during his time in Jerusalem. And it was here that renovations led to the discovery of this rare silver Tyra coin. This is a very strong coin, very heavy silver. That's why it's so rare. Jerusalem is full of treasures, and this is one of them. This coin was likely used to pay the temple tax during the reign of King Herod. Elat Lieber, the director of the museum, told CBN News the discovery brings the story of the Gospels alive. And we know from the Gospels that Jesus visited Jerusalem. We know that he talked to the money changers. So here we have the evidence, the archaeological evidence, to the historical sources. Another major part of the renovation is the Faisal Tower built by King Herod. Yotam Carmel heads up the conservation project. It's important nationally, I think, internationally, and also personally, but uh, to really touch this kind of structure is uh, moving for me. Trying to preserve something and actually let it live on for future generations and actually to do the best which is possible to keep as much original fabric as possible. Carmel says the work Herod envisioned and ordered is exquisite. Unbelievable. I mean, it's hard to understand how they lift, how they build, and how long it will last. I mean, it will last for thousands of years more. Unbelievable building system. Hard to get your mind around it, how, how it was done. It was just a massive scale of stone carving and building, uh, which is very rare to see. In 37 BC, Herod established himself as king of Judea and began some of the most ambitious building projects in the ancient world, including the reconstruction of the Second Temple. He transformed the city of Jerusalem so much that Pliny the Elder wrote, Jerusalem was by far the most distinguished city, not in Judea only, but of the whole Orient. Lieber says the Tower of David Museum connects the ages. You can see how the past, the present, and the future are actually here at the Tower of David. And we can actually know more about our identity. Christians can see how the Gospels are coming alive here in Jerusalem. She says their goal is to tell Jerusalem's story. This is the most exciting part of our works because all we want is to bring Jerusalem to the world. The story of Jerusalem, the rich history of all of us, Jewish people, Christians from all over the world. The coin will be part of the new exhibition at the Tower of David Museum, while the renovation work will continue for more than a year. Chris Mitchell, the Tower of David Museum, Jerusalem.
It's so great to be able to help First Century Foundation's ministry as they serve Israel. And you know, 700 Club Canada helps serve organizations all across this nation. And you can help too by supporting the ministry of 700 Club Canada. And today, if you give any amount, you'll receive a free gift called Whose Land Is It? In this two-part DVD special, Gordon Robertson examines the facts behind both the Jewish and Arab claims to the land of Israel. So call us today at 1-855-759-0700 or text GIVE to the number that is also on the screen. Most historians agree the Jews were here first, but the Arabs will argue that they were here the longest. Gordon Robertson investigates the Jewish and Arab conflict over who owns the land of Israel in the exclusive CBN special, Whose Land Is It? You just scratch the surface and you find a rich Jewish culture and history. Get Whose Land Is It? You will discover the truth behind the dispute that threatens to ignite the Middle East today. Who are the Palestinians and what are their claims to the land of Israel? Call now to get your copy of the exclusive CBN special, Whose Land Is It? Find out the truth behind the headlines. Get Whose Land Is It? Palestine means invaded land. Why should we call it that? Get Whose Land Is It? Yours on DVD. Available now. It was so great to hear from Jeff Futers of First Century Foundations and just hear really the work that is happening in Israel and how people like Jeff and his organization and other organizations are right there on the ground helping in practical ways, but also through prayer and, and just really encouraging people that though they look around and, and life might be a little like chaotic or... Uh, uncertain of their future, that God cares for them. And they're showing that through how they're engaging people there, how they're helping people. And, you know, sometimes it can be hard to look at a situation like that and wonder what we can do, especially when maybe we're not hearing everything that really is going on, or there might be different sides of every story. But what Jeff said is so important, is that we can come together and we can pray. And that we can continue to pray for Israel. We can continue to pray for people that are there that are impacted by this war. And then we can pray for the organizations that are helping them. And so that's, how, that's why we support ministries like First Century Foundations. Well, we've got a partner comment that I'd like to share. Emily, nice name. She says, thank you so much for the 700 Club Canada. I watch every day as part of my devotions. Well, thank you for watching every day. And our power verse today is from Psalm 118, verse 24. It says, this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. To contact us, visit 700club.ca. Tomorrow on the 700 Club Canada, see how faith helped a struggling couple rebuild their marriage and discover the key to a successful relationship.